All right, I'm here with UFC featherweight up and comer Julio Arce coming off a, a really solid second round knockout win over Herbert Burns in his return fight to the 145 pound weight class. Um, had a bunch of fun fights at 135, but has a uh, re rejuvenated himself in the new weight class again because he started at 45 to begin with, went down to 35, and he's back up to 45 again. So uh, ha happy to see you coming off a good win and happy to see that you're looking to get back in there very, very soon soon uh, on all the social medias but how, how's the day been going so far julio well everything's going really well right now that as you said i'm just trying to get something going right now so let's see what happens you know i saw her burns fight this past weekend and you know he got finished in the third round and i just look at it like man like like that should have been me fighting like a lot of people who got finished in their last fights got fights before the people that are won their fights. But whatever the case is right now, just trying to make something happen and just looking to move forward and really go up the ladder more. And, uh, you know, I, I wanted to ask about that specific situation as well, because Jack uh, Jenkins, who ended up beating Herbert Burns on the UFC 305 card, he was originally supposed to fight an opponent. That guy pulled out. Like you said, Herbert Burns stepped in. Um, but it, like you were saying, it makes a, a heck of a lot more sense for a guy like you coming off a win over Herbert Burns, a knockout win, to go in there and maybe fight Jack Jenkins on short notice. So would that have uh, interested you? Were you willing to go out there on short notice to Australia to take on, uh, take on a tough challenge like Jack Jenkins? They offered it. I would have been there. And uh, what what do you think the outcome of of that fight would have been? Because Jack has been doing some really really good things three and one in the in the featherweight division. Yeah, you know it's. Uh, I think one I would have taken that fight, you know, especially after watching this last fight. You know, he got taken down. Uh, that Herbert just made some mistakes that kind of cost him the fight. Yeah. But regardless, look, I I've, I've been just staying ready, just just staying ready for a fight. So. I would have went in there because I've been training like if I was in, in a camp, yeah. you know, because, you know, before that, I know Korean Superboy wanted a turnaround fight. And, you know, I was like, yeah, put my name out there. Then I know at one point, you know, Akeem Dawadu, he, you know, we we were down for a rematch. I'm like, oh, we'll fight. Since nobody's taking fights, I'll, I'll go to Canada and fight you, whatever. And then, you know, Jack Jenkins, if, I, I, I was ready to fight. Thing is, and I still am ready to fight. So, for anyone, you know, like who falls through, dude, I'm there. I'm there. But it's just that I'm staying ready for no matter, no, for whatever the situation is. And, uh, you, you know, there, there's one thing I kind of look at a lot of these opponents that you were willing to fight a little bit similarly in. Uh, Jack Jenkins, if you would have got that call, you would have went to his home area in Australia for, um, for Hakim Dawudu, you would have went to Canada in his home area. For Du Hu Choi, maybe they make that one in Macau in, in the Asian side of things. Are you, um, do, do you kind of like going into your, your opponent's home area and just kind of taking away uh, their, their fans' hopes and dreams of their, their hometown guy getting the win? Yeah, sure. Why not? I mean, it's, it, it's a fight. So whether I'm there in my hometown or I'm in their hometown, I'm just looking to get that, get that win and just move forward. So if I have to go to enemy territory to do it, I'll do so. And uh, of course, I, I know the opponent does not matter. You, you've named names just to just to kind of keep your uh, your options open and let the UFC just continue to know that you are ready to take on these opportunities. But um, if, if there were maybe a, a date or time that that would be the most ideal, because I know November card uh, in Canada is the one you were talking about. Uh, you were ready to go in at, at UFC 305. But is there like an ideal time, September, October, November, that that would make the, the most sense for you? Like, look, you know, they have November 2nd in Canada, November 16th at the Garden. They have December 14th in Tampa. Um, I know they'll have a bunch of fights at the Apex. So it's just give me a proper time frame and I'll be there. You know, like mid-September into October into whatever future days they have, like, I'll be ready for it. 
And um, I, I wanted to talk about your your earlier UFC career because he's he's gotten a, a a big a big spotlight recently in Dan Ige, your UFC debut win, which has aged extremely impressively. And I wanted to talk about that whole situation that happened with them stepping up on I think four hours, five hours notice. What did you think about that whole situation? You know, I gave it to him. He had the balls to do it. He dude, you know, you really can't talk down about these fighters, man. He he stepped up and he's doing whatever it takes. So I gotta give him all the credit. But look, I share I shared the octum the octagon with him and just super respectful dude, super nice dude, you know, like like it's all love. So I give him his props, man. He did what he had to do. And he showed out. Look, he had a great fight. Although the outcome wasn't what he wanted, but look, now he's fighting uh, some uh he got a really good fight with uh Lerone Murphy. Mm-hmm. So you know what? Like I wish him the best, man. He go go get yours, man. Go get your bag and go go do what you know you're meant to do, man. And um, I I mean you you faced some absolutely amazing competition again. Ige, Song Yedong, Hakim Dawudu, uh, Montel Jackson, who just recently got ranked in the top fifteen. Out of all of these, just kind of absolute killers in bantamweight and in the featherweight division, would you say there's one guy that sticks out as maybe your your hardest test to date inside of that UFC octagon? You know what? I have to. Well, he's song. Song was, you know, he was a tough matchup because you know, look, that dude is where he is. He he's a powerhouse. But if I really look at it, one of my uh, toughest tests was uh, Shaman Marais, even though he's no longer there. Because that's the fight where I got dropped twice, and I could have probably been finished. The ref could have just been like, you know what? But he just let me go, and I was like, yo, we're we're fighting till the end. I don't care. If I'm covered in a a, a face covered in blood, like, I'm fighting you till the end. And most of those fights that I that I lost, except without counting Sang Yadong, they were split decisions. Yeah. So they could have gone another way. Song was the only one that 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 finished me in, in my UFC career. So, you know what? It's like, I hung in there with some of the best in the world. Yeah. And um, speaking of the the split decisions, I I don't know if you did watch the the most recent card that was on yesterday, um, but there was a, a a string of I think three split decisions in a row, a lot of fights that were just completely random. Even at UFC three hundred five, what do you kind of think about the the scenario right now of uh, of judging just being kind of at its worst with so many just random crazy um, scorecards being read? Yeah, I think I think what's happening is. Everyone's basing it off something different. Like there were, there used to be a period of time where, like, if you took someone down, that's it, you won the match. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's like now it starts changing. So, like, even somebody if you're on the bottom, but you're causing more damage, you win. Yeah. But then it's 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 just so inconsistent about what's being what's being asked for because then okay, now if you dominate the fight, then the person might have three more punches thrown than you and then they win. But like it does there's I feel like there's no clear indication. And for the judges, who knows what they're looking at compared to what they look at. What was it that tie two Vasa fight? Would you like they have to get rid of the, the, the guy there. Like they're like, yeah, get out of here, dude. Yeah. So it's inconsistent it, there's no consistency about what being looked at or like what is like what is like what do you guys want how are we supposed to win a fight when especially in the judges scorecards when it's like nobody knows what they're re- really to look at so yeah. it gets confusing there and it gets annoying but then it makes people want to finish the fight but look at high levels you're gonna have tough fights but fights are gonna have to go to the decision but yeah. like what are you basing it off of damage control okay significant strike you know like are you more wrestling dominated more jujitsu dominated more like striking dominant like so it gets a little frustrating there because you know look you're also getting it's, it's half your pay yeah so if it was like okay you know everyone gets their their the pay the way it is i i get it you know make a decision but it's half your pay so imagine if the, that tie, that tie two Vasa fight got scored the other way, and you're like, "What? That's half that person's pay right there." 
because the judges didn't know how to score a fight. And um, speaking on on kind of that that similar topic right there, the that that's been a a thing I've been seeing all around social media recently is people are kind of talking about maybe changing the um the actual structure of the UFC paid to to not have a a win and a show uh like money system where it's just you get your flat rate for winning and then you get your fifty G's for putting on a great performance, but it's not. Uh, kind of hinging on the fact that you go out there and get the win because there are those judges where y- you could get really screwed out of just having a bad judge. Yeah, it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's, you got to go out there and just finish the fight and that's yeah. it. And, and, but, and as I said before, you're, you're going to have fights where you're trying to put this person away. And just, they're just gritty. They're just good. That's why, you know, you're at this stage. And you're going to have dog fights in there. But when you know you clearly won and then you're scoring it to the other person, like, what were you, like, what was that person doing that you gave them around when you've been dominating? So, yes. You know, look, I, eventually, eventually things will change. Who knows? And um, speaking of, of obviously your split decisions, because they've been happening a lot recently, but you've had two in the UFC, which you unfortunately were on the losing side of things where the judges gave it to the other guy. Um, did you feel uh, like right after the fight was over while hearing the scorecards, did you feel that, that you won? And looking back now, years later, do you still feel like may- maybe you did enough to win those fights? In one of those fights, I felt like it was, they gave it to that person. It's fine. Like if it, Whoever got it, it's like we were satisfied with the outcome. Another fight, it was like, eh, I think I won that fight. I took you down, and you know, like it. it the, but then I look at it, I'm like, you know what? Both fights could have gone either way. I think the other one, just because I was bloody, they gave him the fight. Yeah. And um, I, I wanted to ask because obviously you're you're trying to fight. You're you're trying to to go out there, get these short notice calls. You're trying to fight on November. You're trying to put your name out there and, and get an opponent finally. So uh, maybe for the next next year of competition inside the UFC, you have moved back up to featherweight. What are uh, maybe some goals you have for just the, the next year in this new weight class? Like let's try to rip uh, two more victories consistently, and then you know go up in the ranks and. You know, like just really just create more opportunity. And that's it, man. That's all I can really do is like get the win, make more money, and just move up the rankings and keep on taking on the best in the world. And, um, out of your out of your entire um career so far, like I said, you fought Song Yudong, you fought these these killers in the in the UFC bantamweight and featherweight division. But is there maybe any any legend that that's maybe retired now, no longer in the UFC, or someone currently fighting today still in that featherweight division that you would really really like to fight as maybe a dream fight matchup in the featherweight division? Honestly, like I said, if I if I was to fight Korean Superboy, then whether it's in Macau or Look, we go to or fight in Japan, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Like somewhere that'll be pretty freaking dope. Yeah. And um, I, I wanted to ask a lot of people w- would be totally, totally okay with going out there, getting a five second knockout, getting their fifty thousand dollar bonus. Some people are like, no, 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 I need the fight to go longer. I want to experience uh, this. This whole camp has made its way for one moment. I want to actually have a fight, have it last a little bit longer. Some people, again, want it to end really, really early. What, what's the exact ideal outcome for a fight? Do you want it to end really early, get that 50000 or go fight of the night type of thing? You know what? It Go fight of the night at least halfway into the second round, you get a finish. Yeah. Because you get some of the fight, you get the finish, and you could possibly, depending on how the round was in the beginning and into the second, then could be a fight of the night potential but you know you got to finish even better performance of the night so usually around there because you get to showcase a little more but hey there's nothing wrong with getting an early finish because then you could be like i'm ready for the next one yeah and i i think that's the the kind of perfect middle ground right there good, good experience good finish and the 50 g's of course so uh, yeah. and, and maybe you never know fight of the night and a performance of the night because you got the finish and it was a banger could be possible but um la- last question for you here I- if you were given the option to choose maybe be in the opening fight of a of a really good UFC pay-per-view or fight night main eventing a card but it's in the apex or something like that what would you choose main card pay-per-view fight night apex 
main card pay. You know what? I feel like the sometimes you will fall asleep on the apex, the apex fights. Yeah. Um, but you know what? I'll be main event in apex. Oh yeah, that's like you know your main event spot. So all eyes are on you. Yeah. So I feel like and, you, get uh, yeah. More, you get a lot more eyes there. And uh, is that one of your goals for the for the end of your career to to get in some of those main event opportunities? Absolutely, you know, just make it to the top, whichever way possible. Yeah, and uh, that that's all I got for you, Julio. Thank you so much for for taking the time. I hope I'm praying the UFC finally gives you that call uh, in the near future. I know you're 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 one of the more exciting guys at featherweight. You got a, a good finish rate in the UFC, and even if it does go all the way still a good back and forth fight every time you go out there so i can't wait to see what the future holds for you but if you got any last message to lead this video on the floor is yours man nah man just you know i thank everybody i always take my my team tiger showmans all my students my family everybody who chose to support and continues to support so you know just keep watching you know many more great things to happen all right thank you julio have a have a great rest of your day man you too my man thank you